Oh, yes. We had another commonality. Yeah. Lucy and I are the same age. Our mothers They're were from born the same in place. the same city. From, from the Bukovina. From Bukovina. From Chernobyl. And Pauline never understood that we were not meant to exclude her. It yeah. wasn't exclusion. Yeah. It was that we had another bond. The bond of our mothers. The bond of being the same age. The bond of being young women at that time of finding our own way. Yes, but I tell you something. I, I mean, I always, I had really something special for you because I remember I kept seeing you when models came up and I liked you immediately. So did Robert. Yes. But I had to pull it through with Pauline. It was not so easy. No. I really wanted you to do those, those shows. And then eventually, eventually, and it didn't take very long. No. And she, there, there, there was something between us, and you know, Lucy, dear, I told Janie this before. I know Pauline liked me the first two collections, but the third collection my father had just died, and very inconvenient, it was three days yes. before the collection. Yes. And I came back to work because it was the day before the rehearsal. Yeah. It was the rehearsal. And she zeroed in on the fact that I was wearing a black brogreen ribbon that was torn. She absolutely zeroed in on that. And that was the first recognition. Mm -hmm. This is a Jewish girl. Yes. And it's that, amazing. And that meant so much to me. Yes. And that solidified. Yeah. Her relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my, this is like... But she always had something to say on every subject. Yeah. What? I prided myself on being able to tie a bow <laughs> because my mother was a milliner. Yeah. And I could always tie a bow. Never good enough for Pauline. She yeah. always said, Lucy, tie her bow. Well, I wasn't that good with bows myself. I was okay with all the bows when I was standing there sending the girls out. Yes. The minute Pauline was standing behind me, I couldn't tie a bow. I was nervous. That's she was true. just Ooh, looking at me. That's if true. she wasn't there, it was fine. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah, I, fine. Anyway, Pauline was so funny. When we did those shows, mm -hmm. there's something called rotation. Mm -hmm. Rotation is that they come out first, the casual things, then mildly uh, habillé, and then in the end you have gala. But you have to do it in a certain procession. And of course if you have seven girls or eight girls or nine girls, they have to follow each other in order to have time to change. Well, she wanted Gillis or somebody in this thing and this thing which had to come out right after the other. And I could never make her understand it's not going to work. She can do it. She can do it. Yeah, she's well, very yeah, fast. Yeah, she's very fast. I know she can do it. I.e., I want her to do it. Yes, yes. And that explains everything, as long as yeah. I want her to do it. Exactly. Do it. Gillis, because can you tell me about when you, um, um, you were telling me out there mm -hmm. about the two of them, the brother and sister yes. team. What did you want to tell me about that? I wanted to tell you, Janie. And my grandmother. And your grandmother. Right. Janie was surprised that I remembered yeah. Pauline's mother. S I remember yeah. Pauline. Yeah, sure. Having an older brother, I recognize in Pauline the same feelings of the younger sister and the older brother. And it was so evident that Pauline was the good daughter, always hoping that her mother would acknowledge that she was just as wonderful as Robert. So she was jealous of him? Terribly jealous of him. But, but look here. Robert was a handsome man. Robert was beautifully educated. Robert was dashing. And suave. And suave. Look, this, is, this is what I've always thought. This is what I've always thought. Do, do you know what your grandmother asked Pauline on her deathbed? How do you know? Oh, Pauline told me. 
and told me more than once. Pauline told me more than once. Her mother made her swear on her deathbed that Pauline would always look after Robert. Did you know that, Jamie? Paul Ducey, did you know that? Did Pauline tell why do you, you that? Think, why do you think that a mother would feel that she needed to have the younger sister take care of the because older brother? Because Pauline was powerful. Pauline was not afraid to use her power. Did Pauline ever tell you of her mother's deathbed? No. Never, Pauline no. never told no. you that her mother made her swear that no. she would look after Robert? No. Never. Janie, she didn't tell me once. She told me at least twice, if not three times. Why do you suppose she told you? I, you know... It's it, a bizarre it, kind of thing to tell somebody. It's almost like a put-down, isn't we it? Had, we had a diff We had this weird, strange very close relationship and Pauline wanted more of me than I was willing to give Pauline. I was telling uh, um, Gillis before how everybody has this uh, idea of their relationship to Pauline that is very different. Everybody has a different yes. kind of feeling that, and, and she set it up that way not, it's not evil, it's just she had these single relationships that were very different with everybody. Mm -hmm. So everybody out here has a, has a different sense of her. Different. Absolutely. Yeah. I never you, realized you know that she true. talked to you that way. Oh my God, Lucy. Oh, I'm sorry. Anything oh, clear? She... <laughs> you know, uh, frankly, Janie, I, I have not spent a great deal of time analyzing my relationship with Pauline. We, Lucy, both you and I knew that she was jealous of yeah. our friendship. And we just didn't see each other very much. Uh, can you can you tell me, I'm sorry to and leave you here. I, I, by I, all I, means don't, do. I don't want to, by, to by Janie, by I don't want to cut by, you off. No, but no, by all I, means do. We came in here because I was curious to know what you remembered of my grandmother in terms of stylistic, right? I said to you, oh, how did this person create these two oh. incredible uh, uh, people? Janie, Who was she? Janie, I have to tell you something about uh, mothers and daughters. And mothers being such an enormous influence on their children. Well, I have Madeline, three. Is that correct? Her children, her children. Um, you don't get it from strangers, Jane. You really don't. Pauline did not become Pauline because her mother was not an influence. And she wanted, wanted her mother's... I'm back. I'm back. Lucy, tell me if I'm... I'm... Yes. And don't forget, I only knew your grandmother peripherally. I only knew her through Pauline. And what I saw of your grandmother, Chez Triget, was when she would come to the studio and or to the shows, and Pauline being very solicitous of her mother, she clearly wanted her mother's approval, and she clearly was a devoted daughter. Do you think she got her? Approval? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I remember different things. Go on. You saw more of Mrs. Patricia. Yeah, I even had dinner there a few times. Yeah. Uh, Friday dinner at uh, Pauline's mother. Mm -hmm. She was a very sweet lady. Mm -hmm. I think the Gentle. strengths, the strengths of Pauline must be come from come from the father's side. I would say, not from the mother. And Robert was more like the mother. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. And the mother recognized in Pauline the strength yeah. that she saw in Robert her sweetness clearly and gentleness. Robert was a much more gentle yeah. human being than Yeah, Pauline. she had that she had that idea that Pauline was so focused on her career. Mm -hmm. It and was she the was. most important thing she told me that. I have to tell you something very funny. With me and Robert we had a relationship about books. 
because he knew that I adored reading. And then every once in a while he kept bringing me very special books. And I looked at them and the editions were superb. What do you think he gave me? He gave me Giordou in German. Really? Yes, he gave me the most beautiful French book in German translation because he liked the way they looked. And he knew I spoke German. But I thought, my God, what is this? But he also started me reading Nabokov, the first book of he Nabokov, did. yes, Pnin. He did. Can't we just assume he did the same thing to Pauline as a young woman too? I would guess. I would have to guess. But the fact that Robert was the scholar and Pauline was the ambitious business person. Mm -hmm. She was and the go-getter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the fights about that I see alluded to in occasional letters from 1948 on, 53, 56, Janie. 70, 80? Janie. It seemed to me he was angry at her that she was not treating him as an equal. That's right, because she didn't think of him as an equal. She wanted to think of him as an equal. Uh -huh. She always she, thought he was weak. He was not carrying and she his was own strong. weight. He was not carrying his own weight as far as Pauline was concerned. He should be doing more. He should be out there protecting her. He should be out there, do, no matter what. But you see, that really was the, that, that's the, the nub of the woman. Nobody ever did enough for Pauline. Lucy, do you think you ever did enough for Pauline? She just didn't recognize it. No, but, <laughs> but, but, but Lucy <laughs> was saying the same thing. Yeah. No one did enough. It's for very Pauline. rare. Every maybe three times in her life, she said thank you to me. That was amazing. Because she had this insatiable need, she felt she was doing everything herself. Mm -hmm. She was. So so let's go back to the grandmother. Her but mother. No, because we didn't know the father. No, we just knew we her as a very sweet, sweet old lady. Very sweet. But loving. she knew about it. Because she told me once, she said, mm. she, Pauline takes her to the country, but she really doesn't fuss very much with her. Pauline always is on to people when she needs them. That's what she told me. Say that again. Her mother. Uh, she when she needs somebody, she'll be all over you until she doesn't need you anymore. She said that, the old lady. But, you know, that, that's not such an unusual thing. But that's what she had the feeling of that Pauline really didn't spend too much time with her. She took her along like an obligation. But because Pauline was so single-minded of purpose of achieving her ambition, and her ambition was not only to be Pauline Trigier, famous, creative, talented, sophisticated, worldly, but where did Successful. this image come from? Because after all, they had a business, the three of them together in Paris. And it seems Lazar sort of... No, the dance. husband. The husband, husband. Pauline, Sioma, and Lazar. Oh, they, all the paperwork is there. They had a business oh yeah, together. They had a business. Uh -huh. And uh, the complaint from Pauline was that Lazar didn't want his wife to be working. But, uh, she, but if you asked Rodolphe Coigny, who worked there... Oh, really? She was there designing. So they had a business, the three of them together, in Paris. They tried to, it came to America, they tried it, and it didn't work. They all split up. They went to work in different places. She went to Hattie Carnegie. Mm -hmm. and my father, I think, went to Mark Cross. I don't, and, and the other one, or to Fabric com Company. Know. And Lazar went, I don't know where. He fell off the edge of the earth. But not quite yet, but soon after that. So the idea that they would start together, the brother and sister, was something they concocted together at that time. The idea of, of the yes, business being not uh, Trigère Maguet, the way it was in Paris, or Trigère Radley, where it was in New York, but now it was going to be just Trigère. So my father, from the stuff that I, I've I seen of his, is you. that it was you know, it was my idea too. What have you done to me? Get out of the way. You know, it's not so unlike the story of Gypsy Rosalie and her mother. My turn. Me. This is about me. Clearly, somewhere, somehow, 
and from whom? We can only guess. It must have been from the father that Pauline had this huge strength, ego, and absolute necessity to achieve and to succeed. To succeed. Her admiration for people who succeeded was enormous. Yet she thought of herself as this helpless woman. Listen, nobody could cry as effectively as Pauline. She could be raving, ranting, shouting, and then sit down and cry. And cry and cry, poor me. Poor little me. No one is helping me. And she really felt it sincerely, Lucy. It wasn't an act. I don't think it was an act. I think she really thought. What do you think, Lucy? Well, I think that she worked very hard. Mm -hmm. and. At the same time, she went out. She did all kind, and she enjoyed everything. Everything. She enjoyed and the, the huge appetite. She enjoyed all the people she worked with. Mm -hmm. She enjoyed going out. She enjoyed mm -hmm. doing all that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. She really did. Mm -hmm. It she wasn't just that, one side. No, no, no. She, she, she truly was a, a Renaissance woman. Is there such a thing? She was well educated. She was a linguist. She was creative, she was talented, she was a good businesswoman. Janie, in a word, sibling rivalry was enormous, enormous in that relationship. Pauline and Rodney. Uh, it, it was palpable. And he respected her, and he admired and respected her. And of course there was love there, but there was such anger, and it was not very far below the surface. It was evident to everybody. I, well, I don't know to everybody, because they were very courteous in front of people. They were very courteous. I've been introducing myself as much as I can as just Rachel. And of course there was love. Respect and all of it, all of it. What part is Julio got to do in this? You know, I don't know. I don't know the dynamics between Robert and, uh, and Julio. I don't know the dynamics. Um, it, uh, Jeannie, 45 years ago, uh, Julio and Pauline and Robert were very different people. You think so? Oh, of course, I tell you why. Everything is very simple when you're young and strong and powerful and ambitious. It's only with age, and I promise you, with age, my guess is that Julia would not suggest that to Pauline. But don't forget, Pauline was always saying, I have so much to do. No one. Ever, I have to be responsible for everything. I have to make sure that this is done and that is done. Nobody helps me. Robert is supposed to help me. He does. He, can you hear her now? So of course, Julio is going to tell her. Well, Pauline, you better have somebody else in here. Do this. Do that. But Pauline made this vow to your grandmother. I can't believe she didn't tell you. See that. Why would she only tell me? I wonder if she told it to the boys as well. You don't think she ever told them that? What makes you so certain she never told them? When he started the company in California, she couldn't believe that he would do such a foolish thing. She couldn't believe that he would use the name Trigere, her name. How could he do that to her? She was beside herself. And of course she thought it was foolish of him. There were two sides to it. She thought it was a foolish, foolish mistake for him to do again in his 70s. But also, how could he use her name, the name that she had built, that she had created, that she had done. And there was the other side that he was using her name. Just, uh, it, Cheney, I, I, I but he was his. Of course, it he was, was his name. He was arguing that basically was, the business was, was his. theirs. Yeah. Theirs, theirs. We shared it, Pauline, and she again was defending her position. It was hers. She made it and only brought him along. He never participated to the extent she did. And Janie, who will ever know whether or not he did or not? Could she have done it without him in the beginning? No.
Eventually, yes. Eventually, oh, yes. Eventually, yes. You should take this guy. But is the relation I, uh, a friend and someone who worked for Pauline? I see for many years. We knew we were there very well. I and said I've known the boys since they were, I guess, still in college. I guess I met them while they still were. I want to ask you one question from the mm -hmm. from the professional world. When um, Beverly Valdez was hired, were mm -hmm. you there? Yes, of course. Can you? Can oh, I'll you tell you a funny story. I got a phone call from Eugenia Shepard, who was then the fashion journalist at the moment, and an excellent journalist. Friday afternoon, Pauline's show was Friday morning, uh, the press show. And um, when Jane, uh, Eugenia asked me, is it true that Pauline has a black model. And I said, you know, I don't know. And she said, Gillis, weren't you at the Trujillo show? And I said, well, yes. She said, well, how can you not know whether or not she has a black model? I said, well, let's think. Uh, she has a new house model. I've worked with her for the past month uh, called Beverly. Oh, I guess she could be considered a black model. You know, it was so interesting that in that atmosphere, in the atmosphere that Pauline created and Robert created, you, yes, of course, how but is, it was how is unimportant a, how is a, in the mix. How was a, a model that, hired in those days? Um, well, Pauline had uh, always at least two house models, um, and she hired them then uh, by the, for the collection. Sometimes they stayed on for more than one collection, sometimes for two or three collections. By the way, Pauline uh, gave a girl called Barbara Felden, uh, who became a very well-known actress, both uh, television and commercials mm -hmm. and stage. Um, uh, Barbara Felden will tell anyone who asks. She learned everything about style and how to style herself from Pauline Trigere. She had a six-month uh, apprenticeship with Pauline Trigere, uh, learning everything she possibly could learn, a crash course in how to develop herself as a stylish, fashionable woman. And it helped her career enormously. And that's, that's the God's truth. We'll, we'll do some more some other time? Yes, absolutely. What's your fondest memory of Pauline? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of her? Oh, you were telling us before. But yes. Thank you. Oh, this, thank you. There was a thank lot you. of things. Thank it's you. an ensemble, you know. It's, uh, she was very, uh, always nice and kind. And, um, and You were saying after the war? Yeah, no, after the war, uh, it was, we, we were still in, in, in France. and. Uh, she was here, and um, right immediately after, you know, she, the, the whole family here tried to help their family overseas, and um, uh, they didn't know how to, 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 what to do for us. They, they were extremely generous and kind, and um, it was um, very moving. What were the packages that you got? I got from your father. Right after the voice, they started standing, and he was, and he sent them regularly, often these little boxes, uh, white boxes with, with with this fine writing, you know, handwriting. You know, started Mademoiselle Suzanne Carman was my name. Uh, au bon soin, care of, you know. And um, he sent us uh, all these things that we, uh, uh, young girls, were missing. Um, Paulette and Micheline and myself, yeah. lipstick and the these uh, nylons. And uh, uh, all these uh, goodies that were absolutely, uh, uh, you know, was a pleasure and more than a pleasure. It was uh, something uh, special to have. Renee Kaufman had a neighbor, a friend who came by when we went to visit. She said, oh, Sioma, he used to send us coffee and sugar. Yes, he who didn't was remember sending that? everybody and uh, uh, he, he was really so nice and said it was something that you never forget. Mm -hmm.
You were going to tell me about my grand-mère? Yes, I told you that uh, she um, always, uh, when, uh, she often would call us and say, I'm going to the country, if you're coming to New York, you can have the apartment. And then we would come and um, uh, incognito, we would stay in the city, in the apartment, and um, Sioma would have um, uh, croissants, you know, delivered for Sunday morning for breakfast for us and we oh. felt like kings, you know, <laughs> thanks to all of them. Did all of the family go to your wedding? Where was your wedding? No, um, uh, my, our wedding was in Paris in the Hotel des Deux Mondes, Avenue de l'Opéra. Actually, our wedding was like a medical convention. <laughs> <laughs> was so many, all the doctors of the family, their friends, and, and a lot of people that I even didn't know. <laughs> and uh, of course there was the Tantrené, Michel, Grandmère, and um, uh, um, Grandpère was not, uh, you know, no, Grandpère Vechler was dead. And he is the one, and he, I am the only one, and the, of all the children, he went before, when he was very sick, he called me, he wanted to see me. He asked to talk to me all by myself and he made me promise that I would marry, I would only marry a Jewish boy. And I, and I am the only one he asked to do that. He should have asked the others too. He did not. They were too small, they were too young, I guess. I was, I'm the oldest. Oh of um, all of them, yes. Mm -hmm. I was Paulette, was the, uh, Paulette, was, is, we are four years, we're four years apart. Uh -huh. Yes, so he, uh, he made me promise on his deathbed. Wow. Yes. So what is this pin you're wearing here? This is Tante, Tante Cecile's pin. When Pauli, uh, I was going back to France, to Paris, and I, was, I came to see Pauline, to, uh, and then she uh, wanted to give me a few things for Nadine and for uh, 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 Tante René. And she said, I know that uh, Cécile, my mother, liked you very much. And this is a pin. It doesn't have a great value, but she was wearing it all the time. She loved that pin, and I'd like you to have it. So this is the pin I wear. You know, I went to a party, a cocktail party, uh, to an African cocktail party not so long ago, and I lost the pin. And I was sick. And I called the ambassador, you know, it was at the, at the residence there, and I told them, and I described the pin. And uh, she said, uh, well, I was sure that somebody had picked it up, you know. And, uh, and she found it near a t under a table. Mm. And uh, I got my pin back. I so, the, so yeah. who, did any of this family from here go to Paris for the wedding? No, no, nobody came to the wedding. So did they come and visit you in Cal in art in in Africa? No, not in Africa. In, in Washington? Washington. Yeah. Uh, uh, we had Philippe uh, uh, once. He stayed with us when we lived in Arlington. Tante Cecile came a few times. Yes, she a couple of times. She came and stayed with us. We took Tante, uh, Tante Cecile to the. To, the, to, to Baltimore, to go to the beach, and um, Pauline came. Pauline came for the, uh, she came for the inauguration of uh, President Kennedy. And uh, she, she, uh, she did not stay with us, but we picked her up at the hotel. We were supposed to drive her to the airport. And it was a, a, a very cold day. And I remember we had that little French car, the Dauphine, and we had an accident on the bridge going to Arlington. And, uh, well, it was not a bad accident, but we, we made it. Yeah. Come sit down, Evelyn. Yeah. Yes, Spoulin came a couple of times. Did Sioma visit you? Uh, Sioma, no, but we visited him in California. Oh. We went to see him. And he was very nice. We came with my, I have one biological brother. And we, and he, they, uh, we went together. And my brother still remembers, he said, oh, c'était un gentleman. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, we came. I, I've seen uh, your father in Paris after the war. And, and uh, uh, I've seen him here, and I have seen him in California. Yeah. Okay. Merci. How you first met Pauline? What was the connection with him? When you were at 47, just what you said out there. All right. Well, you know, did I do all right out there? Because you were fabulous. it was from my heart, and you know. I first met Pauline when I worked in an office on the 10th floor in 1 West 47th Street or 585th. And I used to see this lovely lady in the elevator when I was going home at night here with me, a little schmo, and she looked so stunning always going out. Of course, I didn't know who she was. And then in a little while, the doctor that I worked for engaged a girl to help me in the office, and it turned out that she was quite a worldly woman, lived on West End Avenue. And uh, <clears throat> she had a sister who was a, a, a part-time model. And when Pauline needed somebody, she didn't have a full-time person, she would have engaged her. And so then she introduced me to Robert Trigea. And uh, Robert was a very charming person. And uh, he used to walk me home from 47th Street to 84th Street. And we would say goodnight, and then he would walk home to 96th Street. In the meantime, we would go in and have a wonderful dinner, and for a whole dollar and a quarter, we'd have a complete dinner in one of those nice restaurants that he knew about in that area. And then through the years, I began to know him and to know him, and then I met Pauline formally, and saw her beautiful clothes, and, and Robert, as a matter of fact, when I was married in 1940, Robert brought the beautiful dress that I was married in to my office. And uh, then, from then on, unfortunately, that marriage didn't work out, and uh, I continued to see Robert here and there throughout the city. And uh, then he married and had a cute little daughter, and I know they came once when, they were when she was going back to uh, South America, and she said she regretted having to leave her papa in New York to go back to South America. That's true. I remember when you were in 56th Street, you said that. And then through the years, and of course then I met Leon because he was making clothes for them and I was able to go over and buy a few things and a few things that I got at very good prices. And uh, eventually then Leon and I became friendly and we married in 68. And just so happened that Pauline was in Florida when we married, and she came to our wedding. And uh, she, I used her wedding ring. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Her. Do you have it on here? Yes. You want me to show it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I had that ring was um, was one that Robert had, had had designed for his workers to give to Pauline. It used to say from Pauline's workers to Pauline's hands. Well, she loaned me that for a wedding, and then I had it copied, and this is the wedding, and it, now it has just something Leon Henlein and Abelin on the, that day. Mm -hmm. And then um, she invited me over. She was staying with a friend of hers out in one of the beautiful apartments out off Miami. And we had a lovely luncheon and a beautiful wedding cake. I have pictures to show it all. And. Um, and of course, we came back to New York, and Ian and I had a happy marriage for 11 years until the poor old darling died. And then I continued to see Pauline and the family. In the meantime, I met Janie and her family. And uh, that's here it we for are tonight. Today. And the last time I saw Pauline, she was standing in there in her beautiful outfit the day she had gotten the award from the yeah. French legation. And you know, even in nice bare feet, she was exhausted that night. And that's how I last saw her standing there. Lovely picture.